Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on hypothyroidism and adrenal fatigue. Which one do you have, or maybe you have both? So a common symptom that I see in many of my patients is going to be fatigue. Almost any person that's maybe their hormones are off, or they've been under a lot of stress, or maybe they have a chronic infection, um, you're going to see fatigue as being one of the top three symptoms. Now, what is it? Is it caused by adrenal fatigue or is it caused by hypothyroid fatigue or both? So we're going to go over how the thyroids and the adrenals are actually connected and some simple things and ways that you can assess your adrenal or thyroid fatigue on your own at home. So first things first, hypothyroid versus adrenal fatigue. We're going to do a little chalk talk breaking down some of the key symptoms. So with thyroid, couple of the key symptoms, and the reason why symptoms are important is because symptoms, we follow them up the chain to what systems are broken down. So certain systems, when they break down, will leave certain symptoms, right? It's like the check engine light in your car comes on. What does it mean? You pull out your owner's manual and you look, oh, that symbol means this, right? Or that symbol means check the engine or check the oil. This symbol means the tire pressure is low. So these symptoms, it's kind of like we have an owner's manual and in functional medicine, we're able to decode and know what systems are breaking down based on what symptoms. And we can also run specific tests that will measure the function of those systems. So if we don't quite know, we can always run testing looking at cortisol function for adrenals, looking at a full spectrum of thyroid markers, TSH, T4, T3, reverse T3, thyroid antibody, T3 uptake, etc. So we can run tests to look at those functions. So now getting back to the thyroid symptoms, we're only looking at them to look at the upstream systems that are broken. So thyroid here, tired and sluggishness. Again, with adrenals, you may have fatigue as well. So there could be a little overlap here. Some distinguishing symptoms we see with thyroid are feeling cold, cold hands, cold feet. We'll look at the fingers, we'll touch, and we'll see if the blood flow returns to the fingers after a touch. That shows circulation. We need thyroid hormone for healthy circulation and healthy temperature. The outer third of the eyebrow will actually start to fatigue. We'll even see mixed edema or swelling underneath the eye or even swelling of the tongue. That's a common thyroid symptom. Hair loss. For women, we'll primarily see on top of the, the crown area. And typically, it'll be your hairdresser that starts to notice, hey, your, your hair is just not quite as thick as it used to be. And we'll start seeing the outer third of the eyebrow go as well. Um, constipation. We need thyroid hormone for gut motility. So constipation could mean a gut infection, SIBO, parasite, fungus, bacteria. But sometimes it can just be lack of thyroid hormone as well. Again, cracking of the fingernails. Remember, we need thyroid hormone for healthy digestion. If we have motility issues, the cracking of the fingernails typically happens because of digestion and essential fatty acid issues, and that's commonly linked to a thyroid symptom. Again, increased weight gain, of course, and we'll also see positive thyroid antibodies. So take a look at any of these symptoms here. There's eight. If you have the bottom one, I want you to give yourself plus five points. If you have any other of these here, give yourself plus one. So the bottom plus five, everything else plus one. If you have five points or more, you more than likely have a thyroid issue. Next, with the adrenals, fatigue. That's gonna be a common symptom that overlaps between both of those. Sweet cravings. Sweet cravings tend to be more blood sugar induced and because your adrenals produce cortisol, which is a glucocorticosteroid, gluco meaning blood sugar, sweet cravings tend to be connected with your adrenal glands. Difficulty staying or going to sleep. If cortisol is too high before you go to sleep, you may have a hard time actually getting to sleep. Or if it drops down too low, our adrenals produce adrenaline to help bring that blood sugar back up, but it also wakes us up too as a side effect. Uh, also, energy crash after a meal. If our blood sugar goes too high, high amounts of insulin can cause fatigue. And dizziness on standing. This is called orthostatic hypotension. Your adrenals help regulate a hormone called aldosterone. And when that becomes fatigued, we start peeing out more of our minerals and our blood pressure can drop. And something as going from a lying to a um, standing position can stress out your adrenals enough where you can't get that blood pressure up fast enough and you could feel a little bit dizzy. Weight gain, of course. Again, brain fog and memory. If we don't have enough cortisol, we're not going to be able to regulate inflammation in our body. And if we have inflammation in the brain, typical sign of inflammation in the brain is going to be um, brain fog. And also an abnormal cortisol rhythm test on this. 
So we spit in the vial four times throughout the day. That measures our cortisol rhythm. If that's abnormal, if it's in the low 20s, or we have DHEA in the low threes, that's typically a sign that we're, we're moving into what I call stage three adrenal fatigue. So take a look at the adrenal symptoms here. If you have an abnormal cortisol rhythm test, give yourself plus five points, and then give yourself plus one for anything else. If you have five or more points, I would consider you having an adrenal issue. So this gives everyone a chance to look at their symptoms and kind of track them back up to their system dysfunction. Five or more on the thyroid, that's going to be a thyroid issue. Five or more on the adrenal, that's going to be an adrenal issue. Now some at-home things that you can do. Well, you can measure body temperature. Body temperature is an awesome indicator of your overall metabolic health. Let me grab my thermometer. So what you can do is you can wake up in the morning first thing, put this thermometer right against your skin before you get out of bed, have it sit there for five or 10 minutes. Again, ideal body temperature for thyroid, again, is gonna be 97.8. So thyroid equals 97.8 or higher. Ideally 97.8 to 98.2 for the armpit. If we're looking at our adrenals, we start knowing there's an adrenal issue because our adrenal temperature will actually fluctuate up and down greater than 0.3. It'll actually go 0.3 or greater. That's how we know there's starting to become an adrenal issue. So if your temperature goes from 97 on one day to 97.8 on the other day, back to 97.1, you'll, you'll kind of be aware that there's an adrenal and a thyroid problem. If you're temperatures are 97s and they're consistently low, that's going to be a sign of a thyroid issue because our temperatures are low across the board. They're not getting up to that 97.8 range. So that's telling us there's a thyroid issue. So when we have up and down oscillations and it's low, that's adrenal and thyroid. If it's just low across the board, that's going to be just thyroid. And if it's up and down but high, that could be adrenal and thyroid. So that's a really good kind of sign to know if your thyroid or adrenals are off. And I like this thermometer. It's a geranthum thermometer. Ideally, the mercury ones, ironically, are the best. You think with heavy metals, it wouldn't be. But in that case, that's the only good purpose for mercury, in my opinion. So again, that's a good idea um, how to look at your temperature and how to assess that. So look at your symptoms. Look at your temperature. That's going to be a great way for you to kind of understand how everything's interconnected and to assess yourself. And one more time here, your adrenals and your thyroid are connected. Really simply, we have TSH. This is a brain hormone. TSH gets released from our brain and it goes down to our, our thyroid here. That's your makes your T4. So TSH, the T4, and then T4 gets converted into T3. And again, T3, this is your active thyroid hormone, right? That's active. T4 is actually inactive. Now, a couple of things. If we have too much cortisol, what happens is this. Too much cortisol will actually drive T4 into reverse T3. And reverse T3 actually slows down your metabolism. And if we have too much cortisol, or too much cortisol will actually go to the reverse T3. We don't have enough cortisol that will actually shut down that conversion. So too much cortisol, we get reverse T3, and we also get suppression of TSH. Too much, that creates stress, your body shuttling more to reverse T3, and we're decreasing TSH. If we have too little, we're gonna lessen our T4 to T3 conversion. And here's the problem. If you have high levels of cortisol, and you're going to your doctor to look for TSH to assess your thyroid issue, guess what? it may be normal because of all the extra adrenal stress. Remember, high TSH is gonna be a marker for low thyroid function. But if you have a lot of adrenal stress, that could be suppressing that TSH and hiding a thyroid issue that may never be assessed via conventional TSH testing. That's why doing a full thyroid panel, looking at adrenal symptoms, thyroid symptoms, and both thyroid markers and adrenal markers is going to be the best way to go and with more difficult cases you may find a chronic infection interfering with this remember when you get sick or you get a um, the flu what happens to your body temperature 
it can go up. So some people may have relatively normal temps and it could be hidden by a chronic infection. So just keep that in mind. Hope everyone found this video helpful. If you're struggling with the thyroid issue or chronic energy problems or low metabolism or weight gain, feel free and check out my information below. Subscribe to my site and my YouTube channels. And for more information, feel free and stay tuned. This is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great day.